Well, it's been a few months since I gave you all an update. Um, you're probably wondering what's going on. This doesn't look like your house and I don't see any Christmas lights. Well, the reason I haven't been around for a couple months is we moved. Uh, my wife and I finally took the plunge, uh, made the jump, sold our house in town, and bought five acres in the country. Um, so this is this is our new home. Um, as you can see by the dumpster down there, I've been quite busy since we've moved in here, which is why most of you haven't seen an update from me for a while. Um, but I did want to touch base here, uh, show you some of the new stuff I'm working on, and what I think of it all. Um, if any of you have been following my videos or the website, you know that I've really been kind of holding off on pixels. Um, it's kind of where everybody was going this year and what they were excited about. Um, and I really kind of felt like until we had better software support, I didn't want to jump in. But I've got a few different pixel controllers in, um, been playing with them, testing them. Wanted to kind of show you what some of the options are that are available now that you can probably still get shipped before this season. Um, to start, most of you are familiar with these little things. Uh, I did this first one back in February, the little uh, protocol converters. Um, these things run about 16 bucks on AliExpress, and uh, they work pretty decent. Uh, they take DMX in on one side, and they output to a particular pixel protocol. Uh, this particular one's a 2801. Uh, one, couple drawbacks to these things. Uh, one, there is no programmable start channel. Uh, you're stuck with channel 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth. Um, and the other is that they're protocol specific. So if you want to use a 2801 pixel, you must have a 2801 protocol converter. Um, also, depending on which one you order, some of these are a full DMX universe, 512 channels, some of them are less than that. Um, but the good uh, part of these, or the advantage to these, is they're cheap. Um, at, you know, $16 a piece, um, if you have a small pixel project, uh, these are awesome. And this is what I designed my uh, pixel sign to work around, and uh, the small pixel icicles, the pixicles. Um, all of those, so kind of a neat little deal. Uh, I know a lot of people are using them this year uh, very successfully. Um, the next step up, uh, again, these are from AliExpress. This is how they come shipped. Um, it's just one of these little uh, DMX to different pixel. This is again a 2801 uh, protocol converter. Um, the nice thing about this one is it's got the big XLR plugs and it actually comes with two of the three pin adapters so you don't have to worry about uh, spending money and making adapters and all that. It, it, they give you the, the plugs with it. Um, and this one actually has dip switches so you can set the address. Um, it also has an onboard uh, color cycle kind of like these things have built in. Um, main difference on these is you got to turn that off if you want it to receive the DMX. Otherwise it's getting DMX both from the program inside as well as your your stream. So these things when no DMX is present will go back to that color cycle. I know a lot of people wanted to use that on a on a decoration out in the yard. Um, these things you have to change the switch but you can program the address. Uh, so you know depending on how you are getting DMX out of your software um, these things are, are changeable and will go just about anywhere. Um, and I've modified one of these as well to the the four core that I use for my programming. Um, cost on these is about forty five dollars each, so a little bit more expensive. Um, comes in a nice rugged metal box. I'd call it water resistant, not waterproof. Um, I think if I was going to put it outside, I would still put it in some type of an enclosure. Um, but uh, pretty decent little unit for the price. Um, next step up is the rainbow pixels. Uh, these are new from Seasonal Entertainment this year. And I got a prototype string earlier to look at. Um, this was kind of when they were very first coming out when they were building them. Um, the only issues I really had with this um, were, were pretty minor. And most of them have been addressed in the final 
product, which is what you see back there. Um, I've got both examples of what Greg has available. These are the, the little pixel nodes, um, more the mini light looking ones, and then these are the C9 uh, bulbs. Um, in the prototype, some of the issues I saw, this last pixel was just cut off. Uh, there's no waterproofing to that wire. Um, obviously the, the multicolored rainbow wire, it's a big deal for some people, it doesn't bother me as much. Um, not nearly as much as this plug. Um, with some of the waterproofing issues that I had last season, um, and I think most of you know, I'm a big fan of the, the waterproof four core plugs. Um, and Seasonal Entertainment uses those plugs on most of their other connections, but for some reason, we're still getting these little four wire non waterproof plugs. Um, and these are the type of connections that I had the problems with the most last year. So I would have liked to see that change between the, the prototype and the final. Um, but the final unfortunately has those as well. Um, the other drawback to these uh, was the box itself. Um, it's much more waterproof than you know, this type of controller. Um, obviously it's got a, a really nice plastic box, uh, the top comes off so you can access the dip switches to change the address, the mode setting button, all that. Um, but as you can see even on this button, uh, maybe, we've already got rust present on that and these haven't really even spent any, any time outside. Um, it's just, just our humid weather. So, um, I would have liked to see in this box some type of uh, gasket or seal around the outside. And I may still see if I can, can modify that and do that. But, you know, this is certainly much more waterproof, um, or again, probably I'd, I'd call it water resistant, than most of the, the solutions on the market. Um, would have just liked to have seen these type of pigtails on the, the pixel connection as well as on the controllers. Um, and you can see the the new ones these are what I just received uh, from Greg um, we've got black wires so you know they should disappear a little better at night um, we're close to the military base so we get the uh, flyovers the helicopters pretty often here um, this is our last pixel in the string uh, you can see there's no wires and that's fully filled with resin um, so you know, completely waterproof. Um, really good heavy duty construction on these. I think these are polycarbonate lenses. They seem to be pretty, pretty hollowed, not the real cheap plasticky ones um, that I've ordered before. Um, again, it, my only complaint was the, the plug. So all I've done here was just cut off those original plugs. Um, this is what, what they're shipped with. I just cut that off and put my four core on. Um, also the, the four core that you'll get from Seasonal Entertainment, um, the new ones are black now instead of white. Uh, these are not interchangeable with the Chinese ordered ones from AliExpress, um, just as an FYI. So as you decide to build your system, um, if you want to stay consistent with what everything is, you know, if you're using all of Seasonal Entertainment's products and their controllers and everything else, um, of course these will all work, but if you're doing anything DIY um, or you want to use any of the four core stuff from China um, at least it's all using four core and, and can be adapted from these plugs to the the uh, the softer um, the white ones um, and then lastly and I think this is probably my favorite of the pixel controllers and I, I'm actually calling this a true pixel controller not a not a protocol converter um, this is the ECG P12R from Joshua One Systems. Um, ECG stands for EtherCon Gateway. Uh, P is the pixel, and then uh, 12 is the uh, number of universes. So, um, what this is is an E131 controller uh, inputs E131 directly from your software um, and outputs. 12 universes of control, pixel control, over 12 different fused outputs. A um, few things 
really nice about this particular controller. Each bank is uh, separate for the voltage input, so you can actually run 5 volt and 12 volt together on one controller. Um, those of you familiar with all the different pixel types know why that's important. Um, secondly, uh, it's got these really nice little uh, four prong plugs. Just pull in and out so you can swap stuff around, um, adjust it. I've got running right now on here, I don't know if you can see, these are uh, three different protocols, three different types of, of pixels. I've got uh, 6803, 2801s, and I think those are 3001 um, pixels on them. It might be the 2811s, I don't remember. Um, and you can see it runs everything from the pixel strip to the little modules, the square modules, the, uh, the round pixel modules, or even the um, point node lights. Um, this, uh, as I said, it's a true pixel controller. It, it runs multiple protocols. Um, and the thing that I love the most about this is the uh, user interface. It's a web-based um, interface. Each one of these controllers has an individual uh, settable IP address. So you just open up your, your Explore window and you type in the IP address and you connect directly to the controller. Um, you'll see it also has a uh, micro USB on there. Um, Joshua One Systems, the company that makes this, also has available a uh, universal bootloader program so you can connect directly to it with uh, USB. Um, the dip switches there are for uh, IP address setting and the uh, onboard default color cycle, which is what I'm running on all these controllers right now because I don't have anything hooked up um, to an actual E131 or DMX data stream. Um, one of the nice things about this is uh, it has an onboard voltage regulator. So the board needs, I believe it's 5 volts um, to power it. And so all these pixels that are connected currently are 12 volts. Um, and so what it's actually doing is it's taking the 12 volt feed using these little jumper wires down here, uh, feeding it back through the onboard voltage regulator to power the board and the pixels off of the same source. Um, and I, I do because I like this so well um, and the, the price point makes it uh, so much more cost effective over any of the other pixel solutions currently available. Um, I do plan to do a, a follow-up video on this and there's lots of documentation on this controller both on the uh, Aussie Christmas Light website um, as well as through the company and uh, you know I looked at a lot of different controllers I looked at the uh, the E680, E681 I think now they've come out with the E682 even um, you know even with the modifications to those controllers they're roughly the same price point and they only have eight uh, universes uh, so this is um, you know quite a bit more bang for your buck um, and the the user interface on this um, just how easy it is to use and all the different options um, really make this kind of my my favorite thing and probably what I'll go more of moving forward um, but that's kind of what I'm looking at right now what I've been up to um, I plan to do a a couple follow-up videos, one on the different pixel types, what's available and, and um, construction-wise what I'm seeing, um, and then like I said, a, a follow-up to this particular controller because uh, some of the things it does, you know, changing color order, uh, splitting strings, different options like that with pixels, um, it's really neat and it's just uh, just easier to see it functioning. Um, last little thing I wanted to point out here, uh, this is something new, uh, fairly new. Um, I approached Ray a couple months back and, and sent him a few drawings about getting these uh, little T connectors made. And the first time I asked him, he said no, um, that they didn't have them, that they weren't available, um, that they had a different factory that, that made the T's and all that, and that they weren't compatible. Um, and within a few weeks, he got back to me and said, Hey, I've got them. I'm going to send you some samples. Um, and these things, I'm, I'm finding more and more uses for them. I ordered, I think, two dozen originally. And um, I think the next order I place, I'm going to bring in at least that many more. Um, it's really nice with the four-core setup because you've got you know power and data coming together. Anytime I need to inject power, 
I can just plug into the uh, the stream and add power into my my four core and run on down the line. Anytime I want to run multiple um, strings on a single controller, say I want to run you know two floodlights together on the same number uh, same channel numbers or on the same controller, I can do that. Um, and I think these are priced at right around two dollars each. Um, so you know, if I were to order even two sets of pigtails, I'm going to spend at least two bucks, and then I'd still have to solder them, heat shrink everything else to waterproof them. Uh, so you just can't beat these things on how cost effective they are. Um, the next thing I've got him working on is actually one long string that has these taps. Um, probably every uh, about uh, probably about every three feet, every meter or so. Um, maybe go two meters and um, working on getting just solid caps for these so anytime I, I have like a male female set up like you see here and I'm not using one of those I want just a cap that I can screw down over that just to keep that closed off and waterproof while it's not in use um, so I'll let you know uh, if any of that stuff is possible or if I, I can get any of those made um, but just wanted to give you all an update kind of on what's been going on with me and why you haven't heard much from me and uh, what I'm looking at with some pixels so we'll see